Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. In this video, I am going to be looking at basing, and in this particular instance, it's going to be sort of urban basing with urban litter, and we're going to be applying some things and try and go for that sort of street look, that sidewalk, that pavement aesthetics. Um, so yeah, let's just crack into it and show you how I went about doing this kind of basing. So to begin with, I'm going to take a, ba a plain base, just an empty base here. And I, I, as you saw, I am painting up a zombie side with this, but it's applicable to, you know, any miniature that you want an urban style base to. But I'll do it off a miniature just so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on, just in case. And no miniature in my way. It will be slightly harder if there's a miniature attached to the base like there is in zombie side, but it will not be impossible. I've done most of mine and it's not that hard. Now, we're going to start with the technical paint Astro Granite by Citadel and I'm just using a cheap nasty big brush though big brush because I want to apply this all over and then I'm just going to take this Astro Granite and sort of stipple it dab it on all over the top of this base I'm only going to apply a thin coat I don't even mind you know how much of the little chunky gravelly bits appear on the on on the base, it doesn't really matter. In my, in my experience, it's, it goes well with a little bit, a lot, a medium amount. It's all fine. But yeah, just a quick thin layer, and and that's basically that done. I'll just take a quick moment to point out. I got that all over my fingers, guys. If you don't know, I normally use a hobby holder. In fact, let's get this zombie out of the way. That's the only reason I didn't grab it. And we can use this to hold the base, which will make it a lot less messy on my fingers. So once that's dry, you've, you're almost there. Guys, the next step is optional, but I do think it adds to it. Depends how many minutes you're painting, whether you can be bothered, but I'm gonna add on some street markings to this. So it depends which country you live in and what sort of colors you're going for there. But in the UK, we've got lots of yellows, lots of whites, and sometimes even reds. So I'm just gonna paint on some yellow lines across this as though it's sort of double yellow line, like street parking for us, where you're not allowed to park. And that's just getting quite a fine brush. Try and pay attention to the scale of your miniatures. And, and just imagine yourself out. Go and, go and stand on one of the, the markings on the road and see sort of how much bigger it is than your foot. And then you can, you know, adjust these the thicknesses of these lines too to that sort of scale. So I know if I put my foot on one of these white lines, on one of these yellow lines, it's about the same width as my foot. So I'm going for about the same width as the miniature's feet that I'm putting on here. So the yellow I've chosen does want to be a sort of orangey yellow. It wants, it doesn't want to be a super bright yellow um, and white, white would work fine. And then red again, like a darkish red, I would say, at least that's the color we've got here. And then the technique, as you can see, I'm sort of just dabbing it, just trying to keep the line straight, trying to keep the base straight and just adding the straightest line that I can straight down. And then because we have the double yellows, I'm just gonna do one right next to it as well. And don't worry about it being perfectly straight or not because the, the lines on the street aren't perfectly straight and they've got weathering and that sort of things. But the closer that is and the more time you take, the better they can look. The next step is super easy once that yellow's dry. We're gonna take some black wash. I'm gonna use the Army Painters Dark Tone and I'm just gonna sort of not, I'd say generously, but not super generously. I'm gonna spread it around, but I'm gonna get it sort of, I would let's say evenly, but it doesn't even need to be evenly. It just needs to be like a road. They're, they're not uniform, are they? Weathering doesn't happen perfectly. It's different in different places, that sort of thing. But yeah, just get, just cover the whole base in it. Uh, don't worry about too much how, how much you put on or how little you put on. It's gonna look great. And if you're painting a whole bunch of these, like you probably are, you're probably painting some sort of army, some sort of game. Um, they all wanna look different anyway. So it's, it's nice to have some variance in how much of this you use. Once that wash is all dried up, you're kind of there. Like you could sort of leave it there if you just tidied it up a little bit, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna highlight it up a little bit, just using a simple technique of, of dry brushing over the top of the Astro Granite. And I'm gonna use a light gray. Here it's Army Painter's Filthy Suit, but kind of any light gray is gonna do. And you're just gonna try and catch some of those raised lumpy bumpy bits and just give it a little bit of a highlight to them. For highlighting up the road markings, you're even gonna to wanna to take a little bit of the original yellow or white, depending which color road lines you went for and just highlight that up, just catching some of those raised bits. I'm not gonna try and dry brush, there's not that much to do. So I'm just gonna paint on very carefully a few specks brightening up the raised parts of those lines. And then at this point, you probably just wanna tidy up the base, coloring in the rim, getting it back to black, any paint that's overspilled the end. I'm gonna use Army Painter's matte black here, but any black really is gonna do and just tidy up the rim of the base nicely. 
with the paint all dry guys you could be completely done if you want and that's the kind of look you can get in just a couple of minutes work and that's probably what i'm going to use for the bulk of the game that i'm painting there's a whole bunch of sort of grunts which don't matter and i think i'll just go for that nice and simple 35 or so of them quick easy job for the big, bigger more important characters i'm going to add a little bit of furnishing a little bit of scenery to these bases and i'll show you what i'm going to do now i will randomize this across different miniatures and pick and choose as i go and i'll try and show you what i think is the easiest to the hardest not that any of this is going to be difficult but let's start start easy and quit when you think it's too difficult or choose which you like and which you don't just don't bother doing so for the first bit of scenery that i'm going to add it's going to be a little sort of like poster almost like a flyer and you can print out anything you want guys this is just a piece of paper out of my printer where i found some printies i think they were called but essentially dollhouse miniature scale little posters that i printed out on my crappy inkjet printer this is what they look like i scaled them down to the size that i wanted i've also got bigger ones here for bigger games if you want big poster versions i'm going for sort of flyer versions there's not much space on my miniatures bases for the bigger ones so i'm going to go for these teeny tiny ones after you've printed them out you're just going to want to cut one out so i'm going to pick one here to cut out probably this one right here just snip around the edges <laughs> you guys know how to use scissors and and then we'll go from there it might be useful to grab yourself a pair of tweezers for handling this poster once you've cut it out. I wouldn't even worry about cutting it out too perfectly. You can see I've just folded over one of the corners, you know. This is a poster, a flyer that's now on the street. It's not going to be in mint condition. Don't worry about how well you cut it out. Don't worry about if you damage it. I'm going to apply a little bit of PVA glue to the base then. Just using a, an old brush, grab this little poster if I can pick it up. So flat. There we go. Stick it somewhere on the base. I think covering the line it make it most interesting smear that onto there and then going to take the pva glue and i'm just going to put it carefully on the poster as well i'm going to try and sort of flood it, it the poster with it and sort of it's going to harden and protect it as well as helping stick it down a little bit of water in the pva is going to help but it might make the poster you know it's just a piece of paper that you're then going to be putting water on essentially so take care if you do that i'm trying not watering this down see how that comes out but something like that for the next bit of scenery we're going to add i'm going to take a cocktail stick we're going to be making a can of soda probably a can of coke because they're pretty recognizable i'm going to snip the end off of this cocktail stick using a nice pair of nippers this is going to depend on the scale of your miniatures but for my 28 ish mil miniatures this cocktail stick's about the right size i would say and then you're going to cut uh, you know about the right size for a, a miniature can of coke this might be a little bit big no i think it's okay and just carefully nip that try and get 90 degrees save yourself a bit of effort and then we've got a little little bit like this so we can take this we can either leave it as it is or we can try and put a bit of a ding in it and i think we will so i'm going to put it down on the surface probably could do with two pairs of tweezers here but i cannot see my other pair and i'm just going to take my tweezers close them together just going to push down on it i don't think you're going to be able to see that but adding a little dint if you guys have got a pair of sort of needle nose pliers to hand that would also make it a useful tool to dint it if you push too carefully it's going to fly off your desk and then you have to search for that for a little bit and then once you've located it off the floor again you're going to have yourself a little model can of pop there kind of soda and it's cost you essentially no money as long as you own some cocktail sticks so that poster is still drying nicely there let's add this can of coke so we can get it stuck on a little bit more pva glue i'm not quite sure where i'm going to be adding this bear in mind guys i'm just showing you a whole bunch of stuff on this on this base you might not actually want to add this much to a single base I'm just going to, you know, show you everything on one. So I've got nice reference material for you. So I'm just going to grab that can of coat and we're going to stick it here. Something like that. Get that ding side up. So, it, you know, it adds a little bit of interest to viewage ship. And there we go. Got that glued on. We'll just leave this to dry. The next one is fairly easy, but it's going to depend if you wear contact lenses. I myself wear contact lenses. And once I was done with it, I thought, you know what, we can use that. This is all trash. I'm getting a lot of miniature basing done for free. So we can just take this. I'm going to use it as some broken glass. It's uh, it's not delicate or anything anymore. Um, I'm just going to grab 
pair of pliers and nip these up. So let's try and cut it straight onto the base. Once again, a little bit of PVA glue. I'm just going to dab this in an area sort of over here. We'll start with, I'll do it on the desk, the first piece, because we'll grab ourselves a big piece. So I'm going to fold this over because I don't want any of the sort of random curves. We'll just snip, snip, something like that. Big chunk of glass there, flatten that onto the base. Now the reason the contact lenses are quite good is they've got this blue tint to them. So not only do they you know, look like glass because they're plastic, like any other piece of plastic you could use, but I think they look extra, extra good because, uh, because they've got this blue tinge to them. I'm just going to nip some smaller shards next, and I'm just going to try and get those to drop onto the PVA, but if it doesn't happen, we'll just tweezer them around. I think, but something like that, just a little a few bits of broken shards of glass there. Just to finish off that poster that we stuck to the base or flyer, I'm just going to use a little bit of deep shader. It's the dark brown wash, and I'm just going to use that to blend sort of the edges into the base. And also it just makes it look a little bit dirty, a little bit more like street litter. And now for the soda can, we're going to paint that or make it look like a soda can. And let's be honest, let's go for Coke. It's very, very recognizable people are going to know exactly what that is it's going to be a simple paint job i'm going to start with army painters gemstone red which is their metallic red basically cover the whole thing in that then following that i'm going to paint the top and the bottom in a silver in this instance it's going to be claymore blade giving that sort of soda can look now and then just to finish it off a little bit of that brown deep shader once again just to make it look a little bit dirty a little bit like street litter Another choice for some street litter, I guess, would be some rubble. And I think we'll add ourselves a little DIY brick and some rubble that's sort of falling off of a wall or something like that. For the brick, we're going to take an, a sprue. I've got plenty of these lying around. It's always nice to reuse a little bit of this waste plastic. We're going to snip ourselves a chunk off of that. Again, to the scale that you think a brick would be in the sort of world that you're building. I'm then just going to cut off all of the angled edges and just make it a nice rectangular shape and just like that we have ourselves a homemade brick very quickly some tips with this is do make sure you start much bigger than you want you can always cut down and get it to the scale you need you can't glue more plastic to this to build it back up and also it's quite fiddly to hold and these are really sharp so maybe get some loved ones close by to hold it for you so they lose their fingers instead of you just take care with that guys but yeah look little little tiny free brick. Then to complement that brick and add some rubble, we're going to use a little bit of Battlefield Rocks and Brown Battleground. If they did grey, I'd do that because I'm going to paint these to match sort of rubble from buildings. Anyway, for the Battlefield Rocks, we'll just grab a nice one. Uh, it's going to be too big, so we'll just cut this in half, make sure it's smaller than the brick, I think. Yeah, two little rocks now, and we can start attaching these to the base. Now for this, we're going to want to use maybe super glue. I say we're going to want to use super glue. I've got super glue, so I'm going to use super glue. It might actually be better to use a PVA still. And um, we'll just make a little pattern here, something like, something like that. I wish I left a gap in the middle of it. I mean, guys, just form up your own pattern, however you want this to look. But we're gonna grab ourselves the brick, get it the most brick looking side up. We'll just pop that somewhere over here. Again, again I haven't got a miniature on this and I'm probably not gonna put one on. So it doesn't really matter to me, but it make yours look nice if you've got a miniature on the base, something like that. We'll grab these two rocks. We'll just have one sat sort of here. The other one, it doesn't really matter, but kind of just off to the side over here. Give those a push down. These are foam, so they need a little squeeze onto the base. And then finally, we'll just grab some of that battle ground and we'll just pinch a little bit and I'm gonna sprinkle it over the rest of that glue to look like smaller rubble and then tap all of that off and we've got something looking like that which will need a paint job for this paint job you're going to want to make sure that super glue is completely dry before you ruin one of your brushes but i'm just going to take a light gray something like filthy suit and just cover all of the rubble in filthy suit and then i'm going to grab a nice sort of ready brown something like terracotta this is vallejo's terracotta and i'm going to paint that brick just a nice thin coat all over it and then to help that rubble blend in, we're just going to use a little bit of wash. I'm going to use dark tone here, black wash, but brown wash would probably do too. Any sort of wash just to give it that shade back. To highlight up that rubble, I'm just going to take a bit of that terracotta, mix in maybe about 50% white and just edge highlight the brick. That's going to be a nice enough highlight for me. 
And for the rubble, it's going to be the same with Filthy Suit, about 50% white. And we're just going to dab that on, try and edge highlight the big boulders, catch a few of the rocks, a bit like dry brushing, but I'm just, you know, I'm not using a dry brush and I'm not particularly using a dry amount of paint. I'm just catching some of the rubble. For my final bit of urban litter, we're actually going to use some litter. I'm going to make myself a little trash bag, a garbage bag, a bin bag, a refuge bag. I don't know what that you might call it in your parts of the world. For this, you just need a little bit of plastic wrap. This is a little bit of bubble wrap off some packaging that I had. And then a little bit of trash itself. Here's just a bit of paper uh, off of an envelope. And we're going to situate that in the center of the bubble wrap and sort of wrap this up like a little parcel, like a bin bag and twist that round and round. So just get that locked into place. I'm gonna make sure the super glue is near me. This bit is fiddly. Do be careful not to glue your hands to it, but I'm gonna sort of knock that off like you would a bag, twist that round, and then gonna try, this might be difficult with the camera in the way, but I've done this a few times, and we're just gonna get some super glue on that twist, on that knot. Just around like that, carefully. Just need enough to hold, we can always do this a couple of times if we need put the twist in it some more and then I'm going to push that down using the plastic on the top just to protect my finger from that glue I'm just going to hold that into place for a, a few minutes while I'm waiting for some paint to dry then once your garbage bag is sort of dried into position you might just want to nip down that top to make it look more sort of to scale I, I went for more at the top so I had more space for holding it with the glue um, but now once it's set I think we can get a more realistic at least to the scale that I'm painting at, sized bag here. Something like that's gonna do nicely. So next up for the trash bag is just applying a little bit of that PVA glue we've been using. Just gonna dab that on using this cocktail stick, something like that. And we'll just pop the trash bag in a position. Again, doesn't really matter for this because this is really just a test base, so that'll do nicely just to give you an example of what it might look like when we're finished. So then just a quick watered down application of some sort of matte black is going to turn that into a, a more recognizable trash bag. I actually tried using black wash and doing sort of three coats. I do think that comes out quite well. It still sort of looks a little bit translucent, a little bit see-through, a little bit like, like, I guess, like a bag. But it takes ages and it's three coats and it's not that much better than just painting it black. So that's what I'd recommend here. Once that black is nice and dry and I've covered the whole thing, I'm going to use a little bit of gloss varnish. Now there's two reasons for doing this. One is to stiffen it, harden it in place, stop it sort of being easily knocked and flap around and just make it look a bit more like miniature, you know, a bit hard plastic blending with the rest. But also to add, and that's the choice behind the gloss, is to add a real shine to it like a plastic bin bag like a trash bag whatever you might call it but it'll look super hyper realistic and then just as a final bonus little bit of urban litter what about just screwing up a tiny little piece of paper and i find this works really well next to those trash bags just as though there's a little bit of surplus rubbish or it's even as i've tied up the bag it's split and maybe some rubbish is pouring out but just chucking a couple of bits of paper in the base is really quick and easy no effort whatsoever and then to get those bits of paper looking good and realistic and blending with the rest of the model that we've created, I'm going to use a little bit deep shade of nice brown wash and just make them look dirty, disgusting, and just shade them up, really. And there we go, guys. This is everything I wanted to show you. Five, maybe even six DIY sort of free improvement sceneries litter that you could add to an urban base let us know in the comments below which is your favorite you've got the sort of poster flyer sitting here print out you've got broken glass on the board just here the bricks and building rubble as well and one and then this litter sat next to a trash bag as well and then finally this can of coke around here you've also just got painting road markings on the board i'm really really happy with this this is all very quick it's free this all litter out of my <laughs> my bin onto the board to add some more litter uh, so it's free it's quick you know i'm doing this to a horde game there's 80 miniatures to base like this uh, it needs to be quick so it's quick free and relatively easy nothing here is particularly difficult to do let's have a look at some of these in situ just so you can get a feel for how they look you've probably hopefully you're already watching the channel you've seen i've painted up patient zero you can see i went for a trash bag here uh, some just random screwed up bits of litter down here just spilling out of the bag the white line there the center road marking oh he's even got a bit of blood on this one dripping onto the floor 
the whole abomination. I've not quite finished painting this yet, but I've done up the base, yellow markings here, a uh, can of Coke, some paper and trash bags again. He, you know, I feel like that suits this particular miniature quite well. I've even gone for a big sort of quarantine area sign that's fallen off a fence behind him. Some of the smaller miniatures that I'm painting from the game, a little bit less on the basing. This one's got a little bit of that brick building rubble, double yellow lines, and some broken glass on this side. That's kind of how she looks. And then this runner himself, just double white lines, a can coke and a flyer. So I'm just mixing it up. You don't have to do all of them on one base. Do as little as possible if you want to get through it quickly or as much if you, you know got something fancier to show off. I'm going to be doing less on the grunts, as I've mentioned. I might not even put any rubble or litter on those, but they're going to build up as they get more and more important. I'm going to spend more time on the bases. And that is that then. Um, guys, there's a whole bunch of basing tutorials on the channel, all sorts of cool effects you can go for. Do check those out. And yeah, let us know which is your favorite in the comments below. You've watched it, now go and paint it. I'll see you all again next week. A little bit black, matte black army painter here, but black, 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 black. <laughs> whatever. <laughs>